So I did my review a few days ago of the Signal messaging app, and a lot of people had asked me about Telegram. Man, I said I don't use Telegram and I do not plan on using Telegram. And I know Telegram is a very popular app, but I wanted to discuss some of the reasons not to use it. And of course, the news today in April of 2018 here is Russian court to hear request to block Telegram. And it's very likely this will go through. I haven't uh, heard the absolute latest on this. Uh, I know because it's in process in the Russian court system. They're gonna block Telegram. And let's talk about what that means because Telegram won't surrender the keys. And we're talking about what that means because if you're using an, an, an encryption tool, why would there be any reason for them to surrender any data? Well, that's where we're going to start. So comparing Telegram to Signal, and I'm talking about app functionality. I'm talking about like how it works on the back end functionality. Uh, so we're not going to talk about like what it looks like. That's That doesn't matter to me. I care more about the security of these devices and how they do their encryption. So out of the box, Telegram suffers from the tyranny of the default, as I love the phrase, which means by default, it does not encrypt the messages uh, to a secret server. Now, it does it through Telegram secret server, which means they have the ability to see messages. They then have an option where you can turn on encryption between you and the person you're having a conversation with. So as it passes through Telegram servers, it's encrypted. That is where the flaw lies, because as we know, although you can use Telegram for secure encryption, most people do not. So that's part one of the problem. Part two of the problem is the protocol Telegram uses. So they developed their own um, protocol for it. So that also brings into a lot of questions. When people decide to start building uh, their own protocols, they become very hard to vet because you, they built them on non-standard functions. Now this person who made it, the programmer, may be an absolutely genius person and they do have a bug bounty for someone who wants to try it, uh, but Eh, yeah, the basically the problem is when you do that, and I'll even quote what Moxie Marling Spike said, security researcher Mark Marling said commented on the hacker news and criticized the first contest being rigged or framed in Telegram's favor and said that Telegram's statements of value of these contests as proof of cryptography are misleading. So what in short is they have a weird protocol that's really hard to decipher. Security through obscurity is always a bad idea. And I know it's been slightly looked at uh, by someone a while ago, like Matthew Green. He's a cryptographer, if you're not sure, very well vetted, very well respected researcher. And oh boy, doesn't <laughs> Telegram encryption suck. Seriously, people don't use this except it's there. And there's a discussion on there because it's a custom, crypt uh, it's a custom crypto protocol. So there's that issue there. Um, and I, I kind of like Bruce Schneier's take on it. Don't use Telegram. I, in the same thing, he's looked at it too and says it's hard to make heads or tails of it. So just because it works doesn't mean it's vetted. Just because it hasn't been hacked don't mean it won't. So there's some security concerns that a lot of people have. Now, of course, the other problem is the fact that it can be blocked. That is the final problem with Telegram. And that's because of the methodology that was used in implementation of the protocol requires it to land on Telegram servers. So if it lands on their servers, now you have the problem of they can intercept, they don't necessarily intercept because it's encrypted provided you turned on the encryption as opposed to using it default, but they can say, I'm blocking Telegram. What they did at Signal to get around this, and one of the things that made Signal very popular, is they do what they call cloud fronting. Now, they also offer workarounds for this, and both of these are open source, and Signal's very open source in terms of you can even roll your own and, and build this. They also use very standardized protocols uh, for the encryption, so it's easy to decipher, because knowing the protocol does not make something insecure. If it does, the protocol is not secure, and that's a different topic. They're using uh, forward Secrecy and AES-256, they have a series of uh, HMAC SHA-256 uh, encryption. So they're using all standardized uh, protocols. They call it the uh, double ratchet algorithm by combining all of these together. Very well documented. This has been vetted by other people because it's very clean and easy to read. And they have uh, not just this Wikipedia page, you can also go to Signal's page itself and understand how that works. Um, so it's also because of the well-documented nature of it, other people, and we'll go to the blog post here, uh, in the Signal Foundation, by the way, they're also not a company, they're a foundation, so they're not 
they're not a for-profit. Signal is free and it relies on donations. But other places are starting to use Signal, like, for example, Skype and I believe Facebook have both decided to adopt the Signal protocol. Now, they've adopted the protocol because it's open source and they're using it. does not make Signal interoperable with Facebook Messenger because there's sometimes some confusions that comes in there. They're just saying that they've decided that this protocol that they're going to use and because Signal's open source, they're just saying this is the open source protocol we're going to use for encryption. Do I trust Facebook to encrypt anything? Hell no. <laughs> so cool that they're using it. I'm going to stick with when I want to send messages using Signal. So it is fundamentally different. These are the two different things. And the cloud fronting is that final piece of that pie where what cloud fronting is to explain it is they rely on Google to essentially proxy the data. So you hit Google and then it goes to the signal servers in there. Now it's encrypted before it gets to Google. So Google does get your IP address, but um, if you're on an Android phone, they kind of do anyways. So there's that. So Google does get to see the IP address, which means they're collecting some metadata, but they do not get to see the contents of the message. Now, this is also where it becomes a very safe protocol to use in places, oh, let's say like Russia, because the only way to block signal is to block Google. So. China has gone about this and they're, you know, striving for uh, being able to see everything and spy on people. And so as several other countries, they have to make that hard decision. China is big enough and has other services so they could block Google and provide you with something else um, that's not Google. But they do. It's really hard in some of the countries that don't have an alternative to Google for people to go to. Google becomes this go-to behemoth service, and so you can't just switch off Google. And you're probably saying, well, can't they just detect the signal protocol? The way it works, it, it, it goes to the Google servers, and I believe it's all encapsulated, what looks like standard SSL-type traffic. Therefore, there's not easy distinctions. You can't say this is that because it's all encrypted. So I just wanted to bring up some of those distinctions of signal versus Telegram and why I still choose Signal uh, for secure messaging. I know there's someone's going to say, but yeah, but you're using an Android phone or an Apple phone or whatever you're using to run this on or even your computer. At some point, do you grind the sand and build your own silicone? There comes a level where you do have to decide what devices you trust or what devices you do not trust. Um, that's always going to be a push-pull back and forth. But at least with the Signal protocol and everything, it's well documented as, as much as they can put out in the open is out in the open, which is the full thing. It's open source. It's on GitHub. You can compile it yourself. You can write your own APKs. And if you don't want to use Google CloudFront, it does have an option to use what they refer to as web socketing. So you can use it. Or if you just say, I'm going to roll my own, there's ways you can roll your own uh, and base it off the same protocol so you don't have to do that. And then you can even grind your own silicone and make your own computer so you don't have to have any mistrust in any path building your secure foundation for things. But I still endorse Signal uh, here in 2018 as a excellent, solid platform for security and privacy in terms of messaging. So I've been using it for a while. It's a great one. I did a review of it on uh, Telegram. This is going to be, we're going to see Telegram is not really at fault, so to speak, but we're going to see more of this. Companies going for things that can be blocked, um, such as Telegram, such as WhatsApp. We've seen them blocking WhatsApp in places. Uh, so some of these, these are just global problems we're going to keep seeing as some authoritarian governments want to see everything. That's going to be a concern. Um, your privacy should be your own, and we're you know dealing with that here in 2018. I'm sure we'll be dealing with that a lot in the future. So try Signal. See if that works for you. Um, it's a great protocol, and it's harder to block, and this is kind of why I don't do Telegram. So no need to keep asking me for a Telegram review. Thanks. If you like the content here, like and subscribe.